Happy New Year, angels. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about all of my favorite items that I used all throughout the year. Items that I just kept pulling for over and over and over and you guys probably potentially got sick of them, but that's how you know they're really good because I favor those products and they made it all the way to the end of the year with me. So if you wanna check out all of my 2022 favorites, then go ahead and keep watching. Starting off with one of my favorites for the category of sunscreen. This is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios um, and this is 50 plus. I love this along with the Super Goop unseen sunscreen or the glow screen those are like the top three that I've used all year and I had to put a little bit of thought into this because it's like what did I reach for the most in terms of primers these are top two favorites photo finish primerizer this is the hydrating one and it has hyaluronic acid in here and then this one is the control primer from Smashbox and it has salicylic acid in here so both of them I love the fact that they have skincare as well as they're gonna do something for keeping on your makeup and we love a multifunctional product. We like, there's so many skincare hybrids lately and yeah, it's just a must. So we're just taking the oil control one in the areas that I get oily and I'm just pushing that right into the skin. The next product you will definitely recognize. This is the Vasanti Liquid VO2. I use this basically every day to color correct. I switch it up when I get tanned in the summer but for my winter shade, it is definitely perfect. Next, we have the NARS Soft Matte, and this concealer is basically really, really good for spot concealing. I like to do this when I'm having a breakout or let's say there's some hyperpigmentation because my skin gets marked so easily, and I leave it on, and then that way I could my foundation doesn't have to be caked. I could just put a little bit where we need it, and I could put a thin layer of foundation if I want, but you know I'm a full coverage queen. Blend this all out, and you could see that color correction makes all the difference for someone with dark circles like me. It's just gonna take away that grayness that can sometimes happen underneath our foundation, and this is really helpful for people who have like that strong, like purple-ish tone underneath their eyes. A lot of people of color have pigmentation around the mouth, which is completely normal. Um, so I love color correcting that because otherwise that grayness kind of shines through. The rest of these I'm going to just leave. They're not getting blended. They are going to be covered once I put on my foundation. This is a new favorite. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter and I'm in the shade 5. So this one, actually, I am late on, but I have not put it down since I started using it. I like to just blend it out with a brush first. I don't take a lot of it. It's just kind of like a glowy base. I feel like you could get away with not using this if you use the glow screen because it kind of has a similar glow, except for the glow screen doesn't really have, um, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar-ish. For my foundation, I mix these two and I have been doing it for so long. This is the NARS Soft Matte and this is the NARS Light Reflecting. This is the shade Tahoe and this one is Cadiz. I literally just mix them up and they create the best finish for me. I have oily skin, which kind of transitions into combo during the colder months. And oh my goodness, when I tell you, I keep going back to this combo anytime there's an event and I need something that's reliable, I go to this. There's other foundations that I really love as well, but I just feel like in terms of this year, this has been the most used foundation combo for me. And if you try it, then you know, if you have a similar skin type to me, you're gonna really, really like this. And you could either blend with a brush for more coverage, or you could just use a beauty blender like myself. I love the beauty blender. This has been, this is actually on my favorites and it has been there for years now. And I just feel like it makes the blending process so seamless. Everything just marries together so well. And I don't know, it's just giving flawless vibes. I mentioned this foundation in one of my InStyle articles recently. It was about foundations that also feature skincare in them. And those multitasking products, like I mentioned, are really, really in right now. And I love that because if we're gonna wear the product, almost every day or like at least five days a week why not let it do something that's beneficial for our skin look at that finish it's like not too matte 
and not too glowy. And that is all thanks to mixing those two products together. So when I was thinking about concealer favorites for this year, it was really, really tough to narrow it down. And a lot of these just, I've been using quite a bit throughout the year because I had to really think back. So first we have the Rimmel Multitasker Concealer. This is so full coverage. It's a little bit mattifying, so make sure you blend quick with that one. This is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. We all know about this one. I love it so much. And it's a little bit more glowy. Um, this is the Armani, what one is this? Ooh, pa I think it's Power Fabric, is it? Okay, this Armani Concealer is amazing. Like the smoothness that this finish has. I'm later to trying this, like I tried it at the end of the year, but I'm so glad I did. One that I use almost every single day is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter. This formulation is amazing. Huda always kills it and she did it again with this one. Um, this Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer is another gorgeous formulation. It also has the skincare in there. So it's just like gonna be on that list for sure. And then another newbie that is amazing, the Jouer, um, what is this called? High Coverage Liquid Concealer. And when I say high coverage, it means high coverage. So today I'm gonna be using a combination that I used quite frequently throughout the year and it's these two together. So one is a highlighting shade and one is a shade that matches me. Um, this shade is Praline. So yeah, Huda did it again. So I like to just cover up certain areas that need a little bit of, little bit more coverage. And then for the highlighting shade, and I'm running out of this, eh? I'm going in, this is the shade Wheat. And I'm just gonna bring it out. And I really like to highlight underneath my eyes. Like that's something that I feel like it's a really eye-opening, really beautiful finish. So again, blending with the Beauty Blender because the Beauty Blender is just an OG that looks good every single time. Honestly, rarely ever blend with a brush when it comes to my concealer. Like literally, I, I feel like why put in so much extra work? I get that sometimes you need more coverage, but just use a high coverage formula. I don't know, I just, I can't go back. Like the way this looks so flawless, it's just really tough for me to ever go back. But look at that. Just, it's like such an eye opening. I'm gonna blend it a little bit more, but that lighter shade just helps so much with that beautiful eye opening effect for the bright under eye. And that's why I always use two shades. We don't wanna brighten everywhere. Like there was no need to use a lighter shade around the mouth because why would you, why would you need to do that unless you want to highlight like right here at the cupid's bow but there's no need to highlight the whole entire mouth and i think that's something that some people kind of miss at times so a helpful tip is just to have two shades of your concealer and they will do two jobs one will just be to conceal and one will be for your highlight and this is an example of how amazing those two come together just to create the most flawless look so today we're going with the huda beauty tantor this is definitely pulled for quite a bit probably the most which is why i'm putting it on there are two other favorites that i need to mention because this year i really did fall in love with these products so of course we're going to mention the charlotte tilbury hollywood contour wand this is amazing but as you could see you run out quickly and it sells out and then you're like <gasps> So I have kind of saved that one for occasions. I'm not gonna lie, but it is such a beautiful finish And then the NARS bronzing cream the Laguna bronzing cream. This is in the shade Laguna 3 I love this one as well. It's just like first of all, it smells good, too It's like warming up the skin you get chiseled, but it's kind of like that glow where you're on vacation It's not shimmery. So but I don't mean that by glow. I just mean the finish of it is just very natural looking but yeah, so those are two other favorites. But what do I reach for the most? Probably Huda, I'm not gonna lie. I had to really think about this one as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and blend and I'll just talk about why this one is what I reach for quite a bit. It's because it's deep enough to take all the way into the summer. So in the winter, I can use it too, just a little bit more in a sparse way because we don't wanna over bronze. Sometimes I... Sometimes I can be notorious for over bronzing and I look like I just came back from vacation, but hey, I'm not mad at that. Um, I have a thing where I'd rather be kind of a little bit more tanned than too light because I feel like when you look too light, you're like a, I don't know, just like a ghost, like a floating ghost face, which like nobody wants. 
especially when you're a deeper complexion. So I prefer to just deepen it. That's just me. But anyway, yeah, so I really just love this one. Um, it's just, she is an icon and she is so easy to blend. Like, I feel like I could just go and I'm like ready to go. Next up we have blush and I was a little bit nervous because I'm like, when it comes to blush, you guys know I am a blush addict and I've talked about so many different blushes, but when I think about what's like the most, like the go-to, I have to say that it's the shade Happy by Rare Beauty, but I do need to mention this formula by NARS. This is Torrid Liquid Blush by NARS. This one is also extremely beautiful. Both of them are. They're just different types of shades, different formulas, both stunning. But if we're going to talk about what I use the most, it's definitely this. So we're going to go in with Happy by Rare Beauty. We're just going to stamp it on. Really, my blush happens to go off of what my outfit is. Obviously, a lot of everyone knows that. Um, but a lot of times, like this pink blush, just because pink, light, fresh pink blush has been trending for so long, I just feel like it looks, and it, then it happened to look really good on my skin tone. It was a shade that I felt like at first when I saw it, I'm like, oh, there's no way it's going to look good on me. And then I tried it and I'm like, oh, wait, it looks good on me. What? So I was really happy about that. Um, then I just literally, like, quite frankly, became obsessed. So <laughs> I like to just like pat that on. I'm blending with a Rare Beauty foundation uh, brush. Um, and we're just taking that in. And again, the beauty blender is going to come in and just kind of diffuse everything it is just stunning so now we're going to talk about setting everything in place and my usual go-to would be using my beauty blender as kind of like a powder puff um but i realized that and in my head i was like oh it's doing the same exact job as a powder puff as a makeup artist i know obviously powder puff is always the og especially when it comes to my laura mercier translucent powder which is definitely on the list this is the shade honey is one of my absolute favorites but i recently did a video where i used the powder puff this is the laura mercier and honestly guys i compared it with my beauty blender and like setting with my beauty blender and yeah the beauty blender did not compare the puff a powder puff is really truly the best thing um i definitely need to purchase one of those puffs that's like shaped in like a triangular way so that it sits really nicely under the eye but this is the smoothest finish that anyone could ever ask for with the puff like the puff is iconic for a reason um but yeah, the video with the comparison on one on each side was really and truly very eye-opening for me because I didn't realize the major difference that it actually had. I was I was thinking, oh, the Beauty Blender is doing the same exact job. Really, it was not. You already knew I was going to pull this out. This was the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. It is, it's just like the one and the only that I've been pulling for like all year long. And it's huge. It's like a gigantor. So I like to use this to just set all of those areas that I just contoured and it just warms up the skin. So we're gonna do that. Kind of just like on the borders of the face too. This formula is really good because it's not, it, there's not really like a sparkle in here. You can use it to contour the nose. You could use it, it's like a multi-purpose vibe. You could use it for your body because that's what it's intended for. That's why it's so huge. <laughs> Okay, before blush, we're using the Airbrush Brightening Powder by Charlotte, and I'm in the shade Tan Deep. This is a new favorite that I've been pulling for. So while I'm like while I'm wiping away my bake, I'm kind of pressing that into the skin with this powder. I always use two powders whenever I'm doing my under eye. And I saw some recent um, videos online with artists doing it the opposite way. So they start with a little bit of pressed powder and then they bake. I like to do it the opposite, but I am open to trying the other way. Um, it's just that like, and there's no right or wrong way. There's just so many different techniques with makeup. And I've talked about this multiple times. I just love that about makeup, how you could just do something. You, you get to the same final result or maybe a little bit different, but there's so many different paths to get there. What was my favorite blush shade of the year? Powder blush. Definitely NARS. Oh yeah, this was broken. I forgot. NARS Thrill. I just like dropped this and it got everywhere, but, and using the NARS Kabuki brush. This is a cool tone blush. A lot of people think like, no, you can't use that on deeper skin. 
Um, I'm here to say I beg to differ. I love how it looks. I am a huge fan and I like to layer it on. We're talking about blush. It's the first thing to fade. So I like to be very generous with my blush and I always am, as you guys know. And this brush just allows me to disperse and distribute that blush so beautifully on my cheeks and a little bit higher up as well. It is just stunning. My most used highlight was definitely Max Whisper of Guilt. This is just like an iconic shade. I like to just focus it right there on the highest points of my cheekbones. And I don't OD with this on a daily. Um, I just kind of, because I don't want to enhance any texture, but I just kind of pop it on there and it just looks gorgeous. I love it for the inner corners, the brow bone, the nose, like just, it goes everywhere. We are going to finish off the look with my favorite setting spray. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless. And oh, I just ate that that's more like it and we're just gonna let that set into the skin and that is it guys thank you so much for watching i am looking forward to such an amazing year ahead don't forget to comment and let me know what type of content you'd like to see this year i'm really really excited to be creating some new and exciting stuff for you guys don't forget to like and subscribe because i post every single sunday and i'm going to post my most recent video right here for you guys to check out i will see you guys next week bye